We're going to talk about all the issues also apply to cell phones. So uh, it really impacts us in every way, from cell phones to uh, our wireless. So first thing I want to talk about is transmission over cable. Transmission over cable between a switch. So when I talk about cable, I'm talking about plugging in a cable into a switch port and going into a PC. This transmission over wired is incredibly reliable. And the reason why it is, is because when we talk about the voltage signals that are being sent between the switch port and your network card over this cable are almost 5 volts. So this has a very, uh, we have about up to 2.5 positive and 2.5 negative. That gives us almost a 5 volt peak to peak signal that goes across this cable. What you don't realize is it's being impacted by fluorescent lights. When you look up here, uh, you see fluorescent lights. That doesn't mean anything to you, but for an electronic engineer, electrical engineer, that's a problem because that creates RF interference. RFI, EMI, radiated energy out of a fluorescent ballast is significant and can impact data transfer on these cables. If you don't believe it, take one of these cables and wrap it around a fluorescent light a couple times and then plug it into your network card. You will see a significant slowdown in your web surfing. Why? Because that RFI EMI is actually inducing signal onto this cable and actually causing retries, drop frames, distorted packets, all kinds of problems. Because those guys create problems for us. But Carefully wired systems provide very reliable, high speed, very, very reliable transmission. Okay? So, this is great stuff. If you want very highly reliable data transmission, you can't beat wire. You can't beat twisted pair. Now, let's take a look at why. Why is that true? Well, number one, when we twist the wires, they found out a long time ago. Uh, well, let me, let me talk about this. Between the switch port, when I send, one of the ways that we make the wired world very reliable is that we use, when we, when we transmit a signal from the switch port to the PC, we use what is known as differential signaling. So I want you to look at this picture. Basically what happens is, this is, this is the hub or the switch, this is your NIC, so this is your receiver, this is your sender, and this is the twisted pair cable. When we send uh, Ethernet across the cable, we use what's known as differential signaling. And what that allows us to do is you'll notice we'll send the pulse, uh, um, we send this pulse low, and at the same time, we send the pulse high. What happens is you get noise that's, that's actually induced into this wire, say from the fluorescent lamp. You get noise in all of these wires. What happens though is by the time it gets to your network card, you can see the noise has impacted that negative signal. And the noise in red has, impact, has impacted the positive signal. But because we're using differential signaling, these two are the same. The signals that we want are opposite but equal. And what we see is a total rejection of this red noise that has been put on this cable. It's gone. It's eliminated. So, let me go back to the fluorescent lamp. Differential signaling actually will remove a lot of the noise if I wrap my patch cord, I went up in the ceiling, wrapped it around the fluorescent lights a couple times, the differential signaling between the switch and the NIC would eliminate a lot of that noise. You would still be able to surf. Now, if we didn't do this, you probably wouldn't be able to do anything. Okay? That RFI EMI would induce into this wire so strong that you couldn't get rid of it. You, it would destroy all your signals. I have seen at conventions where they take bob wire, 
two strands of barbed wire. And they hook up an ethernet connection on one end, and they spool huge, big bale of barbed wire, two strands of barbed wire, and they communicate from one end to the other across barbed wire. Why? Because we're using very special signaling between a hub port and a network card. So differential signaling does amazing things. Now, obviously, there's another issue. It's called twisting the wire. Ma Bell, years ago, back in the early days when we had telephones, they had the same problem. They would run out two wires from a point in the uh, neighborhood, and they would run those two wires through the dirt, the sand, and they would come up in your house. And if you picked up the phone, you heard radio stations. You heard every radio station in the area. You picked up your phone and you heard radio stations. That's called AM rectification. They found an interesting thing. They found that if they took those two wires and they what? Twist. Twist. Yeah. They twisted those wires. What happens is the twisting wires actually cancel out those radio stations. So I want you to take a look. Notice as we go from CAT 6 to CAT 5, notice how many twists per inch mm -hmm. that you notice in the cable. What do you see that's happening between CAT 5 and CAT 6? More, more twists. We're actually putting more twists per inch to get more rejection from unwanted signals. What you guys don't realize is in this room is devices that are generating RFI, EMI, and when you put wire, look guys, when you lay wire out, you become an antenna. That's perfect antenna. And it will pick up all kinds of unwanted signals. So if we don't use differential signaling, if we don't use twisted, if we don't use these techniques, we can't reject effectively all the unwanted interference that we get. Okay? So that's how wired is extremely reliable. Differential signaling, they use encoding techniques, they use twisted pair, they do all kinds of things to get rid of 60 cycle fluorescent bulb interference. If you run your cable near a water cooler, a water fountain, or a motor, uh, a lot of you have a refrigerator in your house with, as a compressor. That compressor generates, can generate, a lot of RFI EMI interference. But because of this technique, it rejects a lot of that. So, what cabling, the whole technique of wired systems, wired transmission of data, has proven to be very, very reliable. Look over here, you can see, here's another technique that we're using. We're using a plastic filament. You can see it right here in the middle. You can see this nylon. Everyone see that? It's a big nylon separator, and we put each pair in a separator nylon uh, compartment. Mm -hmm. That is even another way that we can keep all of these wires away from each other in a certain distance so we don't get crosstalk. We don't get signaling getting from one pair into another. All of these techniques allow us to do speeds, look guys, I can do speeds up to 10 gigabits through wired. Because of all the techniques that I'm saying. Because we're using very carefully engineered wired, we're using very high twist per inch, we're using differential signaling, we're using special encoding, and so wired transmission is incredibly reliable. And we're now, in fact, if you uh, are watching the magazines, we are getting ready to move to 100 gigabits per minute. I'm sorry, 100 gigabits per second. So right now, 10 gigs is common. 40 gigs is used in data centers. They're already experimenting and working with 100 gigabits per second. So 10, 40, and 100 is now reality. And it's all because wire technology works because of all the things that I just said. Mr. Okay. Ansel, does uh, that speed, the, the basis, I mean, I know there's a transmission speed, but uh, does that, uh, all that different shielding, I mean, results in a better, clearer signal? Is that how they can determine that's what By the speed By doing everything is? I've said, they're able to get 
higher and higher speeds across eight pairs of wires. Eight wires that act like antennas are normally a disaster. But because we're doing all the things that I just said, we're now running up to 10 gigabits per second on a wire cable. And that's a clear signal. That's how they define it. It's a clear signal. Okay. So in a data center, it's not unusual to see 100 gigs, 40 gigs, and 10 gigs all the time across uh, Cat6 uh, twisted pair. So those are the techniques and the, the uh, methods that we are using to get incredible reliable, reliability across wired. But there is the big problem with wired. What's the problem with wired technology? It's really expensive. The cable is expensive. The installation costs a lot of money. So when you talk about hiring electricians to run conduit, to run cable, to punch down, to buy the Cat6 cable, all of that costs what? A lot of money. And that is the biggest drawback. We are not going to get rid of this, but we're going to use it less and less. But here's the thing that you don't realize. You're all thinking, well, that's no problem. We can just go to wireless. What's the problem with wireless? Well, I'm here to tell you there's a lot of problems with wireless. In fact, it's amazing that we're able to get the wireless that we have right now. So let's go to wireless now, just for a minute. Number one, when I radiate energy out of a wireless cell tower or an access point, I am generating, I want you to look at this, when I generate power out of an antenna, it is something around one million, one thousandths of a volt, up to two, uh, two I'm sorry, twenty millionth of a volt. So when we talk about how much energy is coming out of an antenna, it is incredibly small. Okay, listen guys, it takes, listen, it takes 170 watts, not a, not a thousandth of a watt, or a millionth of a watt, but it takes 170 watts to cook your coffee in five minutes. Hmm. 170 watts. We're talking about an antenna that doesn't produce but a thousandth of a watt. So the first thing is, there's a huge difference in signals. One is very big, strong. One is very what? It's incredibly small. The signal coming out of a cell phone tower, the signal coming out of a wireless antenna, is absolutely mind-boggling small. Why? Is it fair? My, your safety. Absolutely, your safety. It's the same frequency we would cook chicken. All right? So if we're using the same microwave energy that cooks chicken in the microwave oven, do we want 100 watts of that in our home? Reading our wireless? No. So they have to bring that same microwave energy way, 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 way down in power to make it safe. Okay? But the problem is, when we bring the energy way, way down, it becomes very, very difficult to get tra uh, wireless transmission. So, I want you to understand, number one, wireless transmit as an incredibly small amount of energy. In fact, it's mind-boggling. We're talking about one thousandths of a volt. I just told you over here, this is 2.5 volts. This is... Um, a thousandth of a volt. A huge difference. All right, so number one, when we begin to transmit energy out of a wireless antenna or an antenna, we are talking about very, very small signals. Okay, first thing I want to jump over here, and let's go take a look at these. Uh, I want to introduce you to uh, DB. All right. 
So in the world of wireless, in the world of cell phones, we talk about power in terms of dB. In fact, we actually use a, a standard called dBm. That is how we measure how much energy is coming out of a cell phone tower, how much is energy is coming out of our Wi-Fi antenna. Take a look at this. If I have, uh, let me slide down here. If I have negative 30 dBm, that's a very, very small amount of RF energy, this is the maximum achievable signal strength. That's when your mobile phone is just a few feet away from an access point. You get negative th uh, 30 dBm. That's very small signal. If you get about negative 67 dBm, you're probably at the smallest signal that you can get voice over IP, video streaming, anything smaller than this, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to get video streaming or any. Here is if you're gonna get email and web, you can probably get away with something as small as negative seven dBm. Okay, so what is that? How small is that? Very, very small. Let me show you. What is dBm? So if I go so this is how you measure dBm. You put a half, almost half a volt, across the 600 ohm resistor, and you get one thousandth of a watt. That's a zero dBm. So it's a very, very small signal when we say uh, uh, zero dBm. And that's, that's how we measure power. You can, this is negative 100 dBm is a picowatt. Uh, the minimum received signal power for a wireless network. So if you have an 802.11 and your signal is getting to you at about 0.1 picowatts, that's probably, you're not getting a whole lot of energy. You're getting just enough to connect. In other words, I can see the access point, but I can't do anything. Notice here, with a GPS satellite, you can use as little as negative 127 dBm and still receive latitude-longitude coordinates. Folks, that is so small, it's unbelievable. Your wireless on your cell phone needs a much stronger signal than your GPS receiver. Your GPS receiver can, can, can get a, such a small signal as a negative 127 dBm signal and can tell you where you are on the planet Earth. But wireless, uh, you got to have more. you got to have between 40, negative 40, and at least a negative 70, I would say... Uh, these right here is pretty much what you have to have in order to have Wi-Fi. Negative 40, negative 50, negative 60. All right, let's go take a look. I've got a, look up here, I've got all of our access points showing up right now. You can see here's different access points. Here's OCPS Mobile. And you can see right now I'm a negative 68 dBm right here. Negative 68 dBm. This one right here, you'll see it's a hidden one. I've got a hidden access point. It's negative 36, and notice how many bars I have. Yeah. Uh, as, I, as you look here, you can see some of these. This one is negative 59 dBm, negative 58. These are pretty close. They're not real good, but look at these. Bright House 6, negative 31. That's because it's right behind this wall. So notice the signal bars are real high. I've got about negative 24 dBm. Remember, that is very small signal. You all are looking and saying, well, it's got four bars. It's green. That's good. No, that's a teeny, tiny, tiny signal. When you start getting into negative 80, forget it. Okay? If you get into negative 50 and negative 59, you're probably going to be able to get your email, but that's about it. When you get negative 26, negative 35, you can watch Netflix. But what I want you to understand, guys, is this is so small. This is a tiny, tiny signal. So the difference between wired and wired.